So. All set? Yep. All right. All right. Well, thanks for having me on, everyone. My name is Jason. I'm an account rep and I'm on spin. Um, today we're going to be talking about the new coming soon status that's in the system. We'll be talking about the recent changes to the search and, of course, answering any questions uh, you have on Pinergy or feedback as well. Um, so let's start with the coming soon status, which has been recently uh, released as an option for agents uh, to use. So the thing with coming soon um, is if I talk about it, I, I like to talk about it in the context of the other options you have when you are going to post a listing into the system, because it makes more sense, I think, in that regard. So uh, the normal, I shouldn't say the normal, but the way it works in Pinergy uh, right now is if you have a listing agreement for most of the property types, per membership rules, you're obligated to put that into the database uh, within the 24 hours allotted, uh, excluding weekends, post holidays, and service holidays. So you have 24 hours to put your listing into the MLS system. And we don't need to see anything. If you put it in, we don't need any paperwork. So that's you know, just the, the, probably the least resistance as far as putting a listing into the system. Now there's other options that can be utilized. Um, and I wanna go over those. So to go over those, I'm gonna go to a section um, called Forms and Flyers in Pinergy. So I'm gonna click on Forms and Flyers. And I'm gonna scroll down to all the listing forms we have available in Pinergy. So these are all the listing forms here. So um, we talked about that you have 24 hours to put your listing into the MLS PIN database, excluding weekends, post holidays, and service holidays. There is an option, and I don't know how often this is going to come up, but it's certainly here if it, the situation does arise where the seller does not want their listing in the MLS system. They want you to sell it. They've made it clear they don't want it in the MLS system, for whatever be the reason. If that is the case, you can have the seller sign a non-MLS listing form. It makes them aware that by not putting the MLS, they're losing exposure to 26,500 plus real estate agents and their potential buyers. It also makes them aware that you're obligated per membership rules to put that into our database. Um, so it's just making it clear to the, to the seller what's going on. And if they sign the non-MLS and you send us that within the 24 hours that you normally have allotted to put your listing into the system, you are fine to then sell that outside of the MLS system. So that's a non-MLS. Uh, another option you would have, uh, instead of the non-MLS, you could uh, possibly use the delayed and this delayed is um, we have a listing agreement in effect, but it's not going to go on the MLS right away, maybe in a month or so, or whatever time the seller and you need to get the property ready. Uh, so that's fine. You can do a delayed. So just have the seller sign the delayed listing form, and on the form you state the date that the listing is going to be put into the MLS system. We just need the form within 24 hours of the listing agreement going into effect. So the uh, one thing to, to watch out for with the delayed though, is you absolutely cannot- Sorry. Um, that's okay. You cannot market the property until the date is put in. So. Well, can I keep going real fast? The delayed, you want this paper, this particular paperwork before it's put into MLS? No, normally if you have a listing, you can just put it in MLS within 24 hours. Yeah, so why do we have a delay? What is that? What's the purpose of that? Seller, seller needs some time to get the property ready. You have the listing, if you have the listing agreement in effect, you have to put into the MLS. Okay. Right? Right. Unless unless there's a situation like the seller doesn't want it in the MLS right away. Okay. Oh. Oh, wow. So you see more times. Sometimes they can't use input it and not have this online. Yeah, they need a month to get their house ready. You can put it as an offline, but it doesn't count. It's just, yeah. It's, yeah. Not, it's not posted for anybody else. That right. doesn't count towards anything. Oh, so it delayed other people to still see it, but they don't. If they it's want it, wouldn't they want to get the house ready, then they put it on no. the All right, so we'll go through them again. I'll leave you want the listing agreement signed. They yes. Work with you. Right. Yeah. If the listing agreement signed. You have 24 hours to put the listing into our system, and if you're not going to within 24 hours, and you just need a form telling us what's going on. Oh, I see. Are you doing now a delayed? Understand. Are you doing a non? Are you doing now a coming I soon? Now I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Why? That's important. Never had that before. That's yeah. for me. That's okay. That's all good. Okay. It's good to talk about this, right? Instead yeah. of. Makes sense. Trying to figure it out later on. So again, the non-MLS, the seller doesn't want the listing in the system. The delayed, it's going in the system, just not right away. Give us the date. You can't mark it until that date. Mm -hmm. uh, a deferral of showing form. This one's a little bit different. Because uh, the non-MLS, the listing's not put in the MLS, right? The delayed, the listing's not entered into the MLS until the date. <laughs> uh, the deferral, this one's different because you are entering the listing into the MLS uh, database. You're just not showing it right away. So the, until the open house kind of thing. That's usually yeah. the way it goes, but it doesn't have to be. What it is is um, if you do a deferral, you put the listing in, you post it, it gets new, but you state in the firm remarks field that the first showing is on this date, which sometimes is like the first open house, right? Right. Um, so 
you did, the, the thing to remember on this form is you can't do deferrals for more than uh, seven days. Oh. That's it, max, seven days. And you're accumulating days on market too, even though you're not showing it. So. Now, it's a basic question. The, uh, no, it's not being recorded, right? Oh, I think so, but <laughs> yes, I don't know. Never, never, never. Keep going. No, no, ask your question. No, 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 no. Everything has to go into dot loop, right? Dot loop is, an, is not an MLS bin product. Oh, okay, that was my question. No. Dot loop is for your office only. Oh, thank you. Other offices use it, but it's not. You, know, okay. you don't have to use it. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, yep. I have another question. Yeah. So, say you fill out the late listing form and it's, say they don't want to mark it until April 12th, and then their house isn't ready. Do you fill out another date? Yeah, with the new date. With the new date. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. You can change the date on the, de on the delay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, non MLS, not going in at all, delayed going into the date you tell us. Deferral going in right away, but not showing right away. And now there's a new one. Not to make it complicated, but it just ends up getting complicated, right? Um, just remember that if you have a listing and you put it within 24 hours into the MLS, you, you don't need to see anything. So there's nothing required. Okay. Uh, you know, so uh, these are just different marketing strategies that agents use and different situations that may arise with the listings not going to the MLS right away. So the new one is coming soon. And so this one's interesting. So normally you see that post listing button in the system. But now you're going to have an option called post coming soon. So you could post the listing as a regular listing, if you allow me to say, or you can post it as a coming soon. If you decide to do coming soon, it gets an MLS number. It gets put into the system for other agents to see the listing. I mean, for all intents and purposes, it is a listing, except it does not accumulate days on market, and you absolutely cannot show it and you tell us the date when you post the coming soon that you want it to go out of the coming soon status and just become a regular regular listing and that happens automatically um, you cannot use coming soon for more than 21 days it does not get fed to third party publications if you will like zillow truly realtor.com we do not feed out coming soon listings automatically although you are free to market it on your own so um all required fields that are normally required when you post a listing are required for the coming soon. Say that one more time. So all the fields you normally would have to fill out when you post a listing, all the red fields, are still required even for the coming soon. Um, yeah, so those are the options. Uh, again, so coming soon is, a, if you think about it, it really is a listing except for it doesn't accumulate days on market while it's in coming soon. And you absolutely cannot show it while it's coming soon. And it's not going to Zillow. And it's not going to Zillow, and it's not going to contacts right. automatically. Now, you could find a coming soon listing and click on email and send it to somebody, but the auto feeds are shut off. So automatic feeds to existing contacts in the system, automatic feeds to third-party publications are shut off. Yeah. So you might have a client that's looked on Zillow and they can't find, like, oh, I'm discouraged, I'm not finding the property. You might be like, I, I have an over property that's going to hit the market in a week. Yeah. That you don't have access to, but I'm going to use some information, right. and, you know, that could be an give you uh, more value in that sense, maybe with the coming soon. So with the coming soon, you'll need a delayed listing form too. You need a form because, you know, we like our forms. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> if it, remember, if it's not going in within 24 hours as a normal like posted listing, then we need the form. So this is the coming soon uh, right here. Coming soon and deferral is showing form. They're like one form, but basically that's the new coming soon form. So. Any questions, Melissa? Nope. Awesome. All right. If you want to search coming soon, I mean, it's its own status. So if you go to the search section of Energy. You'll see it uh, right here, coming soon. And it will show the active date. So let's see how many coming soons we have in the system right now. So if I say to the system, show me single families in coming soon status in our entire database, right now we're looking at 45. So these are all coming soon listings that I brought up. And see the active list date here? So that's the date it's gonna go live. Although the agent can change it at any point. And only we can see this. Um, I mean, the list agent, yeah, basically only you can see it, but I mean, you could send it to your clients. Right. I can still email it out. Mm -hmm. I, the list agent might advertise it themselves on Facebook or whatever, who knows, right? So we can move the date up? Yeah. You could even go, so you could even say, I want, I want out of coming soon right now, and I want to post this regular listing right now. So you could change the date or just make it like a regular yeah. listing, whatever you want. Where did you go to get the coming soon to pull that up? Where did you go? Oh, yeah. So I just went to the search here. Search. And then it's got its own status. You just check coming soon. Check. 
Actually, I want to uncheck the on market, so I would just do this. That. Yeah. No, you gotta uncheck everything and, and check. Coming soon. Right. Mm. Thank you. Uncheck everything. Yeah. Thank you. Coming soon. Yeah. Then coming soon. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, when posting and coming soon, let's see if I can show you the. So if you have a listing in the offline partial tab, let's see if I have one that's uh, yeah here. See this? I have an offline listing right here. See the post listing and then post CSO. Mm -hmm. All right. I guess we're gonna go on to the search. If there's no questions on the coming soon. That's awesome. I thought I'd get a ton of like situational questions on the coming soon. Yeah. Really? You guys are all good? Okay. I'm coming soon. Do you need pictures? I mean, some people Yeah, you know. Yes, it's interesting. Um, our our rules are, are kind of lax on photos, anyways. I mean, if you post a listing, you have five business days to put in at least one photo. And not having a photo is always kind of like something you want to avoid anyways. So it's almost like takes care of itself. So, but coming soon, no, you don't have to. It's not. No. Okay. No. Wouldn't need a photo. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You can say coming soon photos. <laughs> I mean, it's probably, if you see a coming soon that doesn't have a photo, you might not jump to the conclusion that something's wrong with it because it's coming soon, maybe. Yeah. So that might be a, an advantage uh, if you need time to get your photos taken professionally for the property. Yeah. Well, you can always do it delayed too if you need more time. And you can only do it 21 days out. Yeah. Um, Correct. But you can redo it if you need to go longer. Once you can resubmit that bond. No. No. Coming soon is the longest. Max. Even if you okay. go coming soon for two days and like cancel the listing and try to put it in again, it'll, it'll kick up and just say you oh, can't so do still this. Also, it has to be the 21 days it, if you need to bump that. Yeah, 21 days is the maximum amount you can put a listing into coming okay. soon. Good job. The system will track that. Yeah. Okay. It won't let you go past it. I mean, it just won't even do it. There's plenty of time. It's plenty awesome. of time to let everybody else see it. Yeah, get prepared. It's coming yeah. to market. Yeah. Thank you. Well, yeah. We're doing a rental. That's what I'm thinking about. I don't know exactly when it's going to be done. I got the whip out, but yeah, you know, it could be changed. Yep. But I. All right. Let's talk about um, the new search changes. So. Obviously, we made a what would look like a big change to the search. Right? Everybody saw it and went, oh, it changed completely. <laughs> oh and started God. panicking with the spring markets <laughs> coming up. This looks completely different what's going on. And we hadn't changed it in so long that I think it scared a lot of I agents. I actually like it now, but I hated it in the beginning. Right. Okay, good, <laughs> good. Um, we didn't change a ton, honestly. I mean, the old search is, uh, let's see, I'm going to the old search. I mean, it looks so much better. Like, this is the old search page, oh, right? Oh, yeah. Well, when you're emailing people, too, it's asking one. you if the median assess value. Like it's a lot. A lot of data. A lot, a lot of uh, like boxes you have to check off when you're sending someone listings. Emailing mm. them over. It's asking you to put in the median. Oh really? I haven't gotten that yet. Oh, All right, wow. let's we'll get to that. I think we'll we'll definitely talk about that. All right. So as far as changes on the actual uh, search page itself, I think there's like maybe six. So the biggest change though is this is um, what marketing is called responsive design. So it's not, the, the point here is it doesn't matter what device you're using to access Pinergy, it will just adapt. So if you're on a tablet or a smartphone or a Chromebook, it doesn't matter anymore. You don't have to learn a whole new app that can't do what the regular system can do, this whole new interface. You just, you know Pinergy, use it. So on a, on a laptop, you'll see like the three columns. And if you switch it down to like something like, that'd be a smartphone view, but it's the same fields. It's just one long column. And if you're on a tablet, you'd have like a two column layout. So it'd be something like, um, like that. So, but again, it's just Pinergy. So this is good, I think. You don't have to really worry about that sort of stuff. So that's the biggest change. It was kind of behind the scenes, uh, making it responsive. Um, we added check boxes in. There's some grumbling on the check boxes because you do gotta maybe click once or twice more. Yeah. We're aware of that. Uh, it, it wasn't the name of uh, making it responsive. Tablets really can't click and drag like you can on a mouse. So to make this work across all the devices, they added in check boxes. To try to make it a little easier, they added in like a select all, deselect all checkbox for the property types and the statuses. Um, so that might make it a little bit easier. Mm. We added in, uh, we updated the help. So this would be good, I think for newer agents especially, uh, where it says status is a little question mark. Yes. And if you bring that up, it abbreviates all the statuses and what they mean. So contingent means the listing has an accepted offer to purchase with a contingency, but it is still on the market and is available for showings. I know mm -hmm. some agents get confused by that and don't realize that it has to be um, shown if requested, if it's in contingent status. So it kind of spells it out here. So we updated the helps. We added in list date. So I could say to the system that I'm looking for a single family on market that was listed into the system sometime between January, let's say January 1st, 
and um, January 31st, 2019. So you can put in like a date dash another date and say it had to put into the system between this date and be in an on-market status. I have a question. Yeah. So say your listing is contingent and it has that status, but your seller is telling you that you she doesn't want to show it anymore. Under agreement. It has to be under agreement. Well, at MLS pin rules state that if it's contingent, it has to be shown. Like they still haven't done the inspection, which is contingent upon that. You can have contingencies and go right to under agreement. I think the way that we look at it is you have an accepted offer, whether it's contingent or under agreement, right? There's an accepted offer. The question is, are you leaving it on the market? That's contingent. Or are you pulling it right off the market? That's under agreement. Okay. So under agreement means that it's off the market. You're not required to show it. Contingent means it's on the market and you are required to show it. Contingent listings do accumulate days on market too. So keep that in mind if, if that's an issue. Uh, we, so we added list date in. That's one change there. We added in some standard search criteria fields. We added in the ability to search by price per square foot. So you could say I'm looking for a property that's between $150 and $200 per square foot. Uh, you can do that now. We added in the uh, total parking spaces field, which is a calculated field. Um, list agents fill in the garage spaces and the non-garage spaces, and then we add these two together and create a field called total parking, which you can then search. Um, we changed the wording on the advanced criteria in Penergy. If you guys remember the advanced criteria at the bottom, we changed that to be called additional criteria, and we made this a hyperlink. So it's not obvious, but you can click here, and it will just send you to the bottom where it says additional criteria. And then you can say, I want to add in some... Uh, additional criteria other than these fields. Maybe I want to say to the system, I need to find a cape. So I can go down to additional criteria, click on select, and then type in what I'm looking for here. So cape is a style. So I can just type in S-T-Y and it finds it. I click on it once. And if I only want to see capes, I'd click here. If I want to exclude capes to my results, I would click here. And so if I only want capes, let me do that. Let's say I only want to see capes. I can just check that and then go down here and hit add and it adds it in. Um, in the same area under additional criteria, if I hit select, I can tell the system that instead of showing me all the additional fields I can add to the search, and there's tons of them, I could say only show me the fields, right here, filter by category, only show me the fields that agents actually have to fill in when they post a listing into the system. So now I know if I'm going to get the results, you know, if I'm going to get results or only get like a few results where the list agent might have filled in the field. So, so these are very uh, reliable fields to use when searching. So you can also do price field filtering, date fields, green fields. Um, we added in the ability, and this is more for a smartphone. So if you're using Pinergy on your smartphone, you can go to the address fields and you can say, just use my current location and bring up everything within, um, I don't know, let's say like two miles from here. And uh, that quite contingent. That is, let's say, on market. So, so single family on market from my current location going out two miles. We have, and that's a Kate, let me get rid of that. <laughs> There's 21 results. So that was a change as well. Selecting towns. Um, if you want to select a town for your search, you just go down here and type in the name of it. So, um, there you go. Just DRAC brings up Trade Kid. Click on it once. Select it. Roll. Click on it. Pretty easy, right? You guys remove the um, the feature that, like, say you wanted to go right, right to W. You used to click right on it, hit W. So we, we now have to stop punching in the, the town. Well, like what town W are we talking about? Um, let's just say Waltham from A right. is right there. So Waltham, W. Yeah, you would have to write. Right there, Waltham. Yeah. You just click here and type W. Yeah, yeah I'll do the same thing. Right. W. Wakefield, Wales, Walpole, Ware, Wareham, okay. Warren. Yeah. It's a little different, yeah. but yeah. it's Pretty still, easy. I think it works okay so far. The only um, issue we've had that, uh, Agents have brought to our attention is we took, the, uh, took away the ability where you could type in a bunch of towns separated by a comma, 
there used to be like a type in field, mm -hmm. which we didn't think would be a big deal, but I, I get the point, like an agent would be like uh, trying to type in a bunch of towns, and let's say they want Framingham, so you go like F-R-A-M, there's Framingham, they're gonna move their mouse, their hand away from the keyboard, move to the mouse, click on it, go back here, type in another town, and it's a back and forth where some agents are like, I just wanna type in a list of towns and hit once and have them all mm -hmm. selected. So we will be adding that back in. So we are taking feedback, you know, since the release and, and implementing changes. You should be able to type it in, press enter, and it just goes there. Oh yeah, that, yeah, that might that's be an option good too. Idea. Well, yeah, because you, yeah. oh no it oh, didn't. It does it. Oh, you can. It might be browser specific. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't even think it would do that, so hey, I just found something out. <laughs> if you just, like, Framingham, you F R A M. Let's see if it still works. So I hit enter. Yeah, see, now it's not, though. Type in the whole Is that what it is? All right, there's one. Oh, yeah. So when you get down to one, you can hit enter. Yeah. And that avoids you have to go back and forth. Yeah, that works. All right, so... Uh, that's really that's it for changes on the home pages. It's not I mean on the search page. It's not a ton of changes um, Just small things here and there again the big changes that it's responsive mm -hmm. now there, there has been a lot of changes to the results like when the results come up There's a ton of things you can do ton of options. So let's um, Let's go through that. Uh, is there any questions here though? Well, just you also took out my area. You know how you used to have just where you practice. Well, we still have that. Is that still there? Where yeah, we that's I um, that. here coverage areas. Oh, okay. It okay. should still show as the first still one. Still shows your middle. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and we put a select all in there. So if you want to select all your custom towns, oh, you okay. can just hit one button to okay. do that. Yeah. Um, we made it easier to save searches from here. <clears throat> this is a lot easier to load and save uh, searches. So really quickly. Let's say I create a search to find properties that um, need work, like fixer upper properties. So usually when you want to try to find those properties, you have to kind of rely on keywords, like searching listings, um, description fields. Uh, so I'm looking for any listing where in the description, the list agent typed in the word fixer or handyman mm -hmm. or a TLC or a contractor. I'm just making a list of keywords that'll kind of give some indication if the listing needs work. Because there's no field I can go down here and select that says fixer upper yes or no. So I've got to use this. So anyways, uh, I want to save this as my fixer upper search. So what I do is after I type in all my keywords, I can just go up here and hit save. So save, call it fixer upper search. Put a description if I want to. Hit save. And uh, just to show you how this works to load the search, let me reset everything because there's my keywords. If I hit search up top, this little tip, it'll just wipe out the search. So if you're on the search section, you hit search up top, it'll wipe everything out. So I have no keywords in here. So to load my um, fixer upper search, I can just move my mouse over the load search. I don't even have to click, just move it over the load search icon and then move down and click on the one you want to load. Oh, cool. And it brings in the uh, keywords. Furthermore, if you think of another keyword like um, Contractor, what else? Investor, investors, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna type that keyword in and I wanna add it to my saved search. Well, since I already have it loaded, I can just move my mouse over save search, move down and click on quick save and it will just simply update that search. So I don't have to like okay or prompt or name it the same thing. Uh, it's just gonna update. Now furthermore, if, if I want to, when I first log into Pinergy, run that search, maybe I run that search every morning or something for my client, um, we put in a little box on the home page that says save searches and there's the fixer upper search I saved so I can just click on that and the results come up. Yeah, so saving and loading searches is... Saves a lot of time. Yeah, it's quick, it's easy, it's, uh, it's great. So, so that's been a change. But let's move on to the results. Let's say we're looking for a single family on market in, uh, let's do, let's see what we got. So in Lowell, 53 single families on market and I'm gonna hit view results. So now to bring up the results, you can click on view results or you can click on the actual number of results. And if you wanna make sure this number is updated, because sometimes it's a little bit lagging behind if you just added in some criteria, you can click on the word count and it'll just double check to make sure that's the number of results. So single family on market, Lowell, there's 53. If I click on the 53, they come up. And let me just reset this to like a one line view and I'll talk about this, hold on one sec. I should have cleared this out before. All right, so the idea here is this. When you're looking at your results from the search, 
um, you can tell the system what format you want to view your results in. Uh, currently, I've selected the one line format. So I want one line of information for every result from my search. This can be uh, highly customized. Uh, for example, I'm looking at this and I'm like, why? I don't need sale price. See the column there? It's taking up space. I don't want sale price. I can just click the three dots and say remove. So you can get rid of any column you want, hit the three dots. If you want to add a column in, maybe I want to see price per square foot displayed for each result. Um, you can add that in. So to add your own columns, you just hit the plus column button here and type in what you want to find here to add. So I'll say uh, I think it's price. Yeah, so just type price and it says these are all the options. And I say price per square foot, move that to the right. So it's in selected fields. And then apply that. And then price per square foot's right there. If I want to move that around, I don't want that to be the last column. You can click on a column name, click and hold the mouse button down, and then just drag. And it will uh, move it. So drag them around, add columns in, remove columns. If you want to change sorting on the columns, I want to sort by days on market, you click on the three dots. And you can say sort ascending, sort descending. So if I want to do sort descending, the property with the most days on market right now is right there, 332 days on market. Um, and that's the one line. The good news is I don't have to save this. This is now my default. So as I make changes, the system remembers this and further searching will bring up the results in this format. <laughs> but you can give this, this um, customization a name. So if I want to um, call this kind of view that I've set up, um, I'll call it like test view. I can just go up to a little uh, gear here and say save view as and then type in whatever name I want to save it under. So I'll call it test. So now in the future, when I'm looking at results, I can say, show me, show me the results in my default view. Show me my results in my test view I created. And that will change the columns and the order that you have them and all that sort of stuff. So, so that's the one line reports. Now, when you get to the other reports that are not one line in nature, like photo summary, this is a fixed report. You can't add in your own columns, but you can still change the sorting. So there's still a sort button here. And it's fixed for the most part. You can still customize it a little bit. I call it like you can tweak the report a little bit using this options button. So this options button, if you click on it, brings up this bar where you can add in little tweak options to the report. Uh, for example, um, I don't know if anybody would use this one, but if you didn't want the addresses displayed in the results, you can get rid of them. Just uncheck address. It'll still display all the data except for the address. But I don't know if anybody would want that. You could get rid of the photo which would seem kind of silly because it's called photo summary and now it has no photo. But if you're trying to print this and all you have is like a laser printer and those print photos horribly, usually, you might just get rid of the photo so you could print it with this data. Uh, so you get that option. If you want to display the list agent list office for every result, you can check office agent information. and It'll add in the list offices right there, list agents right there. And if you want to email the list agent, you have two options now. So if I want to email the list agent and I just want to type in a simple message to the list agent, maybe asking a question uh, about the property, I can click on the orange email icon and that'll just pop up a window. I type in my message and I hit send email. There's no, you can't do hyperlinks, so no documents, nothing fancy, no photos, right? It's just a plain text kind of email. Now, if you do want the capability to attach documents and email to the list agent, you're going to need to use the green um, envelope icon. And what that's going to try to do, and this is, I say try, because this sometimes doesn't work, because what it's going to do is it's going to ask your computer to open up its default email program, which could be Outlook, it could be Google, it could be whatever you set up. If you've set it up, if it's not been set up, it's going to not really work. So, but uh, I think I have Outlook, so if I click on this right now, it'll eventually open up my Outlook, I would think, hopefully. That's if your computer has that feature. Yeah, exactly. If you set that feature up. So see how it opened up my Outlook and it addressed it to the agent. So that is the um, green icon as opposed to the orange icon. Uh, and that's a change. We added in photo banners. And uh, so what this does, if you check, if you go to options and you check photo banner, is if a property has any sort of like new price change, status change, back on market, something that stands out, it will put a little sash across the photo right here. 
So let me see if any of these do. I've had bad luck with my examples. Like every time I want to find one, I can't. Uh, anything? Price change. Yay. So, ah. yeah. so you can turn that on. Um, that is photo banner. You can display the original asking price. So right here is a checkbox for original price, and it adds it in right here. So it either adds it in or takes it away. So you can kind of do that with the um, original price. This one I would say you definitely want checked. Next open house. I, I don't even know why. It should just be there by default because it only takes up like one line of information. And as you're going through your list, if one of the results has an open house, it just displays it. So absolutely check next open house. Let's see if I can find one. Um, lucked out last time. They're right there, next open house. So you can click on it. It brings up the agent information, the photo, contact information. So that's this right here. Uh, assessed value. This was requested by a lot of agents. If you check assessed value, it'll add in the assessed value. All right, medians. So what is this about? This is tricky though. Uh, you know when you get to the bottom of your list, it displays like the average, what is it, average price per square foot, average living area for all your results, kind of like totals for all your results. So you don't have to scroll anymore to get to the bottom. You can just tell the system to collapse single family results. Like right this, um, blue bar here, just click on the little arrow and it collapses it and it gives you the total. So if you don't want to scroll, you don't have to. But this gives you the average uh, living area square feet, average list, uh, list price, average list price is dollar per square foot, average days on market. Now if you don't like averages, you can just tell the system to use median calculations by checking medians up top and then it switches this to medians. So we have that capability. Now if that's not enough stats for you, we have a dedicated stats button. So you can avoid it if you don't want. I don't blame you. There's a lot of stats. So it's kind of, uh, some people love the stats. So what I'm going to tell the system is to select all my results, all 53, by checking this one checkbox at the top. It selects all my 53 results. And then I can hit on the dedicated stats button. And it will give me more stats than what I'm seeing at the bottom. So these are the stats. But what's cool here is I can group my stats. So I can say, uh, I have it on bedrooms. So group my results by bedrooms and then give me the total stats for like a three bedroom, for a four bedroom, for, you know, whatever. And uh, so for three bedrooms, there's 28 results that have three bedrooms. The median list price for those is 321. If I go to four bedrooms, the median price goes up to 349. So you can group by uh, bedrooms, for example. You can do uh, status groupings, town groupings, uh, baths, whatever. So that's a dedicated stats button we added in. Um, and bring back the results. We added in hyperlinks everywhere to make it easy. So most important hyperlink we added in is the days on market. See how it's blue? You can click on days on market, like 332. What's going on with this property? I'm going to click on the 332 and it will tell me three key bits of information. It will tell me every status change that occurred in that property, who did it, what day. It'll give me days on market breakdown and it will show me previous attempts to sell that same property throughout our history. So very important button, click on days on market. And this is what we see. So the property was, I'll zoom in a little bit here. So property was listed for 5599 by Gail on 424. They extended the listing agreement. Mary did that on 723. They did a price reduction down to 445. Um, another price changed down. It expired. They brought it back from expired. And they extended it again. Who are so. all those different people? So I'm, the same company? Yeah, probably like managers. Oh. It's list agent manager. It could be somebody at MLS Pen. Um, it doesn't say staff when we do it, which is annoying to me because yeah. it should say staff. But yeah, I gotta get them to correct that. So you know, it's either gonna be us, a manager in the office, broker in the office, uh, or the list agent. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of people involved here, which is interesting. But I can see a previous hyperlink, which tells me that at some point in the past, this property was on the market trying to sell. Let's go to that point in time by clicking on the previous hyperlink. So this was in the system, uh, well, 1-4-2018 it was put in, but then kind of quickly canceled. And then before that, it was in the system in 1998. It was listed for 349. It didn't sell. It got listed again. It still didn't sell, but then it did. So uh, they listed for 349. It sold for 3249. And that's as far back as I can go. <coughs> oh, really? I didn't know. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Nice to see people stay loyal. <laughs> yeah. So that is uh, days of market. And now you can click on the taxes and it brings you the public record. 
So who owns the property? What information does the town have on the property? Uh, what's the assessed value of the property? Recent sales, all the mortgages taken out of the property, public records. If you click on the taxes. So, what I find interesting here though is that tax information is coming from the actual listing, but if you click on it, it brings you to the public record. So. No. That saves you a step. That's oh. neat. And does that come up, that highlighted feature and the DOM feature come up in, in all the... If it's, yeah, like, well, not all the hyperlinks come up because on a one line, I don't think it has taxes, but the DOM should be clickable. So if I go to one line, right. uh, DOM's clickable. I see. But it doesn't have the, the tax. The tax, so I see. you got to go on the page. Like the photo that. summary would have that, yeah. Well, you can have the tab, can't you? Add the, yeah, I don't know if it would actually add in the hyperlink though, because that would be, let me just double check. So that's going to be taxes. All right, so let's see if we can do that. Um, add column. Mm -hmm. Oops, I can type today. <laughs> let's try that again. Ah. Taxes. <laughs> taxes, there, click. That's the right. Apply. Does it make it a hyperlink? What do you guys think? Thank you. Awesome. What about I mean, of course it did. <laughs> I'm just going to say, what about on the one line? Does this, tax? That is the this is one line. Yeah, and yeah, I'll remember this, so I don't even have to add it next time. Yeah. Yeah. If it's blue, it's clickable. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's usually the standard, right? Um, so other hyperlinks, uh, what else we got? So, oh, list price is interesting because uh, not so much that you could, like the information it brings up is just a stats overload. So if you click on like the list price, it'll bring up all the price changes that occurred, the day on market that the price change occurred, the days between each price change, what was the percentage of the price change and like all that stuff. So if you click on the actual list price, it'll bring that up. But what's more interesting to me is as you scroll through your list, if the list price is not a hyperlink, it means the, uh, there was never a price change on the property. So you can quickly figure out, has it ever had a price change? So this property never had a price change, even though it's been on the market 190. Oh, wow. Um, well, maybe they need one. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. I think so. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I mean, it had a price change in the previous listing, but this is the current listing. So, um, and you're probably wondering, like the current listing is only 13 days on market, oh, okay. but it's actually got 190 because uh, these are so close together, this and this. The system just says. Oh, so that's. Oh, yeah, when okay, you look at days yeah. on market, it's referring to the property itself. How long has the right. property been on the market? Not just the one listing. Right. Um, so yeah, that's adding those. So even though together. it was canceled and put back on with someone else, it just picks up the days yeah. on market. Yeah. Yeah. What? Or did it used to refresh? The days on market will re will refresh if there's a 60 day off 60 day. off market okay. period where it's not being in the system considered off market. Yes. Withdrawn is considered off market. Under agreement, any off market status or not in the system counts towards the 60 days it has to okay. elapse before it resets it the resets. days on market. Yeah, but uninterrupted too, by the way. So if you go withdrawn for 30 days and back on market, you reset that timer. They have a time crunch. Yeah. But uh, anyways, this previous before this one, it was uh, 2007. It didn't it didn't sell, and they tried for sure, <laughs> no doubt. Um, before this, it did sell for 45. So, all right. <clears throat> so that was uh, what was that? What we we're talking about days on market taxes. We covered list price. That's what we we're talking about. We talked about that. All the hype, the links you can add in. Um, oh, emailing and printing have changed some of the some of the emailing printing has changed so this this gets a little tricky uh, all right so if i want to go through my list and select a bunch of listings to email out to somebody i can just use the check boxes so i can say you know i want to email that one i want to email this one and maybe this one and this one so i want to email those four results i use the check boxes and then i can go and click on email but that could be an issue uh, this is where it's a little, it's not intuitive. Email will allow you to email summary reports. So the one line, the photo summary, the CMA style. If you want to email those style reports, you'd hit email. But if you want to email a public report or a full report or a very detailed report, you have to click on the arrow, not the button here. And you go to listing detailed reports. 
and then you'll have your public in full and all, all the reports you're used to. Um, now, I guess the reasoning behind it, at least what I've seen from the system is, if you click on the email button, it's actually newer code we've implemented. We had issues where an agent would select, like let's say 20 listing results, and they'd say, I want to email this to the client, and they want all the photos. So we're talking 20 pages plus 30 photographs per listing. I mean, we're talking a lot of pages, right? So when we email, uh, we put the listings in the body of the email, not a paperclip attachment, not a hyperlink. It's actually in the body of the email. And this would cause some email programs to basically just say no way, and they wouldn't display the email correctly. It would just kind of, you know, break. Uh, so with the new code we've implemented, um, what it does is it will, I can send out a See photo summary. Yeah. It asks for the assess value, the median. Well, these are all your new options if you want. But let's say I want to send this. First thing to note is this is not a pop-up window. See how it looks like a pop-up window? But you can't drag it. They coded it that way because some browsers will block pop-up windows and then they call and be like, I don't see the email window and they turn off your pop-up blocker and you know that sort of stuff. So they coded it so it's not technically a pop-up. And they also coded it so when you go to email somebody the photo summary of the results that you have checked, it will not be in the body of the email any longer. It'll be a hyperlink saying click here to view on the listing sent to you by you know your name and then it would bring them to like a pdf document of those listings in that format so there's been some changes on the email i'm sure they're going to implement that across all the uh, reports but right now it's just the photo summary uh, the summary style reports so and these emails will go out in the default as in a public report not a full report because i realize the difference with uh, when, when you press when you press the email versus the down the drop down yeah um, and the and the drop down when you went to send them out you had you had to manually adjust the um, can you can you now listing detail like this yeah. here yeah see now you got to change the full report to a public report. yeah I mean so, you don't I'm, you kind of want it. It's not a rule, but yeah, you kind of usually want to send a so, photo. Oh, right? So that was the, the, the drop down method. So if you went the other way, uh, does that go automatically to public report? No, it's probably going to, I think it's going to go, let me just double check. I think it's going to go to what report you have. So I have a one line. If I select some of these and hit email, let me see if it brings right, up. So it's going to be the one line. Uh, yeah, see so it grabs it. Right, okay. Yeah, so the new code I think is better. It's just the only implemented to the summary reports, not the public, not the full. None of the one-page reports have the new code yet. Hopefully we'll get there. So I think it'll work better. So. Um, mapping is really easy. You want to map your results. You can either check them or you can just hit map and say all listings. And it'll just bring up a map of your results as you'd expect, right? And you can add in overlays in the map. So this is new. I can say to the system, add in... Uh, schools, schools, public transportation, shopping, and I'll just keep adding overlays for now, that. Where did you get all of that? Uh, oh, PO, legend? Uh, POI. Like, points of interest. Oh, that's what I want. Thank right you. here, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So, you can still hover over and get like the, the details. Yeah. And how do you apply it? Oh, oh, you just click on it. It'll just give it a moment. It'll, 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 right yeah, it'll populate. Yeah. I've been having trouble with my contacts. Um, I'll add one in and put in a search for them, yeah. and then they'll, they'll go away from the list of contacts. They disappear. Yeah, they disappear. Okay, so um, contacts. I know we had a couple questions on contacts, so maybe I can briefly talk about that, and we'll address that issue. Yeah. I can guess what's happening. I can take a, a guess at it. Um, so the contact section of Pinergy, right here, is where you put in your clients to receive uh, property alerts from the system automatically. You put in your clients, you know, name and email and tell the system what they're looking for in a property and then it will just send that client email alerts as properties come on the market or if something has like a price change or something like that uh, that brings it into the criteria that you set up for them. Anyway, so you go to contacts and then you click on new and you put in, see these tabs? So I went to contacts, I click new contact, and uh, there's a lot of tabs and a lot of information here, but really what you need is, on the information tab, you need to put in your contacts first and last name. You need to put in their email, and then that's it, halfway done. Quick question. Yeah. I took something on this, and it said it, you should email yourself as well. 
Mm -hmm. So you should put yourself in there. Mm -hmm. The only problem is if you put yourself in, you're going to get the, the public view. You're not going to get the you know the the um, other view. I yeah. Want the full view. Correct. So the only way to do it, I mean, I I don't want let's say this is a customer. I don't want them to know the listing office. Yeah, yeah. So I would want them to get the public view. Yeah. However, I would want to get the information on the full view. Yeah, usually agents will set up what's called a hot sheet. Okay. And I, I can show you how to do that. And it's a report you can click on that'll bring up any movement in the market. And you can view those in whatever type. Every, whatever I know, but I want, want to get the same information that they're receiving so we're on the same page. You follow what I'm Yeah, our system will send you an email every morning stating what we sent to your contacts for the okay. previous 24 hours. Okay. And they should be clickable links. So you should be able to click yeah. and then see. Yeah. And then you can change that to be full. Oh, for myself. For yourself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we put in the first and last name of my contact. I put in the contact's email. And uh, what's important to remember here is you do have to save. So after you enter the name and email, hit save. And then often the mistake I think that uh, agents make here is they'll hit save and close, but we're not done. So we just hit save. And then the last step is just to click on the next tab here, searches. Uh, a common mistake is an agent will go up here and hit search. Don't do that. Just click mm -hmm. here. And then hit, you know, new search or new contact search. And then what the system's asking here is it's saying, do you want to do a criteria-based search for your client or do you want to draw on a map and say, you know, this criteria in this drawn area, send them stuff. So you can draw on a map or you can just fill in criteria or you can do both. But, uh, so this is just your general search. This is a map-based search. So I'm just going to say general search, and it brings you to what looks like a typical you know, search page. And you've got some settings up top here. So what do you want to call this search? The client will see the name that you call the saved search. So if this is going to be like, uh, I don't know, what are they looking for? Let's make something up. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? I was thinking just town right now. I'll throw <laughs> oh, a pool in. Somebody wants a pool. Uh, yeah, what town? Right now. <laughs> oh no, we can do pool. That'd be a tricky. Right now, All right, let's try it out though. Um, yeah, so what town are they looking for pooling? Um, Melrose. All right, so Melrose, right? And so single family on market. Uh, we'll call this uh, Melrose. Uh, yeah, pool, spool, whatever you want. The, cl the contact's going to see the name, so, but yeah, there you go, right? Um, all right, so when should the system send the email to the client when a property comes in the market? So if a property comes in the market as a pool right now, when should the system let them know? The next day is the default. You can do 15 minutes, you can do hourly. That's set right here under email frequency. So um, d daily is what most agents, I think, use, but it's up to you. I do daily. Okay, so we'll leave it daily. Should they, now we know the system's gonna let them know if a property comes on the market with the pool. Should it let them know if something that's been sent to them previously has now gone off the market though and is no longer available? Because that's an option right here. Should we notify them of off markets as well as on markets? Mm, it just confuses them. All right, so no. Should we notify them of upcoming open houses? If the matches have an open house, should they yeah. be, okay. Yes, but only let them know if it's scheduled in the next seven days, let's say. Anyway, so single family on market, uh, Melrose. Now, pool's gonna be tricky because there's three ways to search for pools, right? You can search for exterior features of pool, you can search for an indoor pool, or you could search for listings where in the description of the property, the agent mentioned the word pool. Because is there something pool. to check on the form that they have a pool? No. Yeah, there is. Oh, there is? Yeah, let's find it. It'd be, uh... so, by the way, there's only eight, really? That, that's, I haven't even put in pool yet, and there's only eight. Oh, Single family on market, no price, Melrose. There's only eight properties eight. in Melrose? I know, I know. I'm Whoa. looking at myself. Did I throw something in here I'm not aware of? <laughs> Seems low, doesn't it? Do? In the right, yeah, right server. Hmm. Oh, because you said open house in the next seven days, maybe? Uh, Is it only uh, giving you the no. ones that have an open house? Mm, eight? Eight doesn't matter. Wow. Huh. Let me just double check by doing oh, like a you separate. Oh, Melrose pool. It is just the people with pool. I didn't put in pool yet. Yeah, you did. I did. Yeah. No, just for the search. 
That's the search name. Oh, oh, that's the name of the search. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm just going to go to regular search and throw in Melrose and see what it says. And I was saying that that's Maybe there's that not that many. I mean, who knows, right? You know, I'm doing it right now because I'm eight. looking for someone. Yeah, it's only I eight. did three towns and it's only giving me two. So what did I oh, do? Oh, wow. Oh, really? I did Melrose, Stone, and Saugus. I put keywords pool, though. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right, so let's, let's do this. Let's, um... It's going to be a long search. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's how you add pool. We're going to go to the very bottom of the search where it says um, additional. Yeah. Select. Okay. We're going to be changing this, and this is probably a perfect example of why we're going to be changing it. You can't just type pool in here because there's no field called pool. There's a field called exterior features which contains oh. pool. So we're going to be changing it in the future so you can just type in pool and it'll say that's contained in this field and this field and this field. So it'll be easier down the road. But right now I happen to know it's in exterior features. So I just typed in EXT and it found exterior features here. So I click on that and it brings up all the options. So I'm saying to the system the property must have a pool above ground or above ground heated or in ground or in ground heated. Are they particular on the pool? So all the pools. I think that's every pool. Well, is this because I have a Mac? No. No, no, no. I, I think I'm Mac people, but I can't blame it on that. Did you just <laughs> click on additional criteria like the blue and it came up? I did nothing so No, yeah. Oh. Up top, up top to the right, you can do that, okay, but not special. on the bottom. Um, <laughs> See, it's not the Mac. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know it's not. It's right behind the Mac. Yes. <laughs> I need all more right. training. So I'm going to add that and uh, zero. But I mean, at least it now just because there's zero doesn't mean I can't save it. If something does come on the market where they filled an exterior feature pool, it will yeah. send it to them. Now the other thing I could do is I could. Um, so when you mark down that you want a, a feature and nothing is there that day, but two days down the line something comes on, that will automatically fill in every time. Yeah. Possibly. It will. Okay. It will email them. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Now I'm going to save this because there might be something in the future where somebody does do that and the client will get notified. So I'm going to hit save search. This saves it to the client. Now the system knows what they're looking for. Now I could add another search and I could say they're looking for any listing where in the description the list agent mentioned the word pool, but I will guarantee you I'll find properties with a pool table. Oh. Like has oh. pool oh. table or something yeah. like that. It happens. So I might leave this, do a search on my own and see if I come across any results using the keywords, and you can manually cue those to the contact. So I would I would set this up where if it obviously has a pool, it will um, email them. Oh, I got to do uh, in indoor pool too, right? I mean, because it could. That house? Well, that'd be like a I know. probably right. <laughs> I think right usually. Yeah. All right, so leave them on then. All right, so they're set up. It, it's completely done. The system will email them if, some, if a listing comes on the market in Melrose where the exterior features has one of those selected that has a pool, above ground, heated, in ground, all that. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is just to make sure we're not missing anything is I'm going to hit search like outside of the contact. I'm not in, in the contact section any longer. And I'm going to say single family on market. I'm going to say Melrose. I'm going to select it. Now that I know I can do the enter key, that's awesome. Um, and I'm going to say bring up any <laughs> listing where they mention the word pool in the, in the, so I just type in keywords, mm -hmm. pool, yeah. and how many do we have? We oh. still have nothing, but hey, we tried. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I always thought pools were like an 80s thing, weren't they? When I was a kid, having a pool yeah, was like cool. super cool. You know? pool? I it's so much work now. Yeah, you got to worry about the chlorine. I got a pool with my husband. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> I don't do the pool, I do the inside, he does the outside. Exactly, same here. Yeah. So somebody's dedicated to maintaining the pool, it's yes. good, okay. Um, yeah, so that's how you do it. But you had said that your contact disappeared, right off the, yeah. okay, yeah. so what I, I would- list, off my list, so, I did exactly what you just did. Just oh my goodness. Uh, well, it's, okay. it's not bad, I don't think it's bad. I think, I think the person's still there. Um, what happens is if, uh, well, normally what happens is if, if Jason here doesn't open up an email and click on one for 90 days, then the system will uh, turn, turn uh, Jason's emails off and he'll disappear. But you get notified list. of that, right? You get notified, yeah. yeah. Now, the other possibility is you went over here and checked one of these boxes, like show me my contacts that have been shut off previously. And look, nothing's showing. And if I go to search and I go back to contacts, Jason has disappeared. 
So what you want to do is go into contacts and then click on clear all filters so that none of these are checked and you should see your contact at that point. Because there's no way they should disappear. We, even, if the, even if we shut them off, we still keep the information. Like, they're not gone gone. Mm -hmm. So. And now that we're here, security reasons, who's in charge of these people that you that work with me? Who's in charge of them? Yeah, I mean, can they be stolen? Can people take them in? It's only within the Pinergy system. We don't feed contact information out to third parties. Um, so it would just be you, the manager of the office. I guess technically if you called in to troubleshoot, somebody at MLS Pin could view your contacts for troubleshooting reasons. I think that's about it. So. I know some agents don't like that the, their broker and manager can see their contacts, but right now currently they can. That's, that's it though. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is three. Okay. Back and forth and they're really going through everybody's like they don't have enough to do it. They have time to sit there and do that. <laughs> Good luck, right, Kelly? <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't. I, I don't. Right, what? Kelly? <laughs> you just say somebody. Don't, 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 don't remind them. They can do that. Yeah. See where it says view contacts for. That's what a manager would see, and they can see everybody in the office, and then they can select their name and view. See. So. Same thing. Well, now, listings make sense though, because you know brokers, it's under their license, right. so you know that makes sense. But um, contacts is debatable. But right now, currently, managers can view um, contacts. Yeah. So that's contacts. Questions on contacts. All right. Um, questions on anything, Pinergy? I don't think so. Have a couple tips to throw in there. Tips on using the system. I do have a question going in the email. The whole email format that the system uh, that the imagery has. Okay. Can we, or has anybody implemented the idea of coming up with testing these listings versus emailing them? Because everybody's on the phone. Everybody can get these. Oh, texting. Testing. Instead of emailing. To your contacts. Yes. Yeah. It's been brought up. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a future update. I, I would like to see it. I know it's been suggested by many, many agents. Yeah, yeah nowadays, it's everything's tax. Yeah. Currently, no. It's just email only right now. Do you have the email? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's the way I've been doing it. But think about it. If you can just touch it, send it right through. I think so. All right, a couple, um, a couple tips real quick, everybody. Uh, if you want to have multiple windows open, some agents are, are they, they get upset because they get logged out every time they try to open up another window, like two searches at once. But you can do it really quickly. If you hold down the control key on the keyboard, or if you're on a Mac command key, I believe is what it is. Uh, if you hold it down, you can click on one of these icons up top and it'll just open up another tab. So I can have like one search here, right? Hold down the control key, click. Hold down the control key, click. And then maybe I want like public records in another window, tools. So here's one search, two search, three search, there's that? tools, there's just hold the control button now. Yeah, just hold on the control. Well, hold on the control. Well, hold on the control. Oh, all right, all right, yeah, you can switch between if you need to. But we're still, I have too many tabs open. <laughs> each one of these windows is still on the timer. I mean, we're, we're still liable to what, one hour is it before? Uh, I think it's an hour and a half. I want to say it's 90 minutes. Yeah. So, but your point is, sometimes, like, if you try to open up another, like, Firefox window or Chrome window, and you log in, it'll log out your previous window. But if you use the control where you're opening it just tabs, it'll keep you logged in. Okay. Uh, you still have the timeout, but yeah. So that's one tip. Another tip here, this one's pretty interesting, I think. Um, let's say you do a comparative market analysis with one of your clients, right? A lot of agents aren't aware that you can go into Pinergy even before you post a listing. You can put a listing in as an offline, like not post it. Mm -hmm. And you can run a query in the system and figure out how many potential buyers exist in the MLS system at each price range for that property even before you post it. Mm -hmm. So you can give them an idea that within the MLS system, the local MLS system, if we, if we list this property at, let's say, 400000 there's going to be 200 uh, buyers that are going to see this. But if we list it, you know, like one ninety nine, we're going to have like 400 mm -hmm. And you can kind of present them some... some uh, data on would how would you receive from the local system. So the way you do is really easy is you, you go to listings and you basically click on new listing. Oh, so you put it in offline. Yeah, you, and you okay. fill out whatever you got in the listing yeah. and you hit save. You're not posting it. You're just saving the form. Yeah. And when you save a listing form, it goes into the offline partial tab. Yeah. Once it's in there and has a set list price, you want to put in the list price, 
You can then click on the refresh button here. Yeah. Uh, this one expires. I don't know if it's going to work. Well, I think it'll still work. But yeah, hit refresh. It'll count up and tell you how many matches. Go in, edit the list price, go back, hit refresh again. It'll give you a new number. And you can just keep querying the system, and it'll tell you uh, at each price point how many, uh, basically, how many eyes would be on the property. Yeah. Now, I mean, take this with a grain of salt because in the MLS system, agents put themselves in as contacts, they put friends in as, as contacts, right? They're not really looking to buy. So I would say this number, if I'm hopeful, I would think whatever number comes back, you're looking at probably about half of those are probably real buyers, you know? But it gives you an idea. And how did you just do that? You just hit the refresh button. Oh, See, so it's right. counting up. So you put a listing in, oh. you find it in the offline partial tab, and you hit refresh. Oh, wow. And it just counts up. It's slow going, so grab a cup of coffee, put it in, give you some numbers. Because <laughs> you did all the towns. Uh, no, that's no, that's in Hubbard's. Yeah, sure. um, yeah. Yep. Wow. So there's actually quite a few, huh? Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I don't know, apparently it's popular, though. I never even heard Oh, that's a nice looking house, though. So. Oh. I like that house. Oh. It's actually pretty expensive. Oh, Holly put that in. Oh, that's interesting. But yeah. Hubbardston. I don't know where that is. Hmm. I don't think it's that far. It's mm -hmm. somewhere in desolate. <laughs> 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 it's not a bad place. Well, hold on. It's, it's not a posted listing. It's not. It's not in the system. So yeah. you can oh, put a, you can put a, yeah, right. it's offline. You can put an offline it's listing in and say one dollar. It doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. So you don't even have to have a price on offline, do you? No, but if you want to if you want to run this, you need a list price. You're saying how you can see how many matches into the house. Yeah. Oh, oh. So, okay. yes, that's oh. a good thing to do when you're that's trying to get much. someone to list, right? Oh. Um, yeah, it's just more data you can provide them because right. your CMA is kind of zooming into the market that exists right. for their property. Yeah. And it's a good idea to say, well, we've zoomed into the market that exists. Let's take a look at the local MLS and take a look at the buyer right. market, right? We're looking right. at the, and yeah, there's this, hey, if we list this at 299999 in the local MLS system, there's 474 potential buyers that would yeah. see this property but now if we list it let's say 250 uh maybe we pick up you know whatever and you'd present that hmm. so yes yeah, so that's a little tip there um what else we got uh how about one more here um let me just go into i think can we go let me go to beta i think we have like a testing server we use so I'm going to show you a posted listing, and I don't really have a posted listing, so I'm going into a fake database to show you this. Uh, but there's a cool feature, once it logs me in. No, it shouldn't matter. Oh, it's not coming out, so something's up. There we go. Ay, ay, ay. Our, our testing servers are like where our old servers go to retire, so like really slow. <laughs> So if you go into listings and you find one of your posted listings and your client's kind of like asking you questions like, how is it going? How many people have seen it? How many open houses have we done now so far? You know, kind of just want an update. Mm -hmm. You can go to the marketing overview button. So every posted listing that you have in the system has this marketing overview button. And if you click on it, it tells you like all the statistics of the property. Uh, and I mean, like there's a ton. So let's bring this up and take a look. So it's basically saying, here's the original price we listed it at, here's the current price, here's the list date, here's the expiration date, here's the total days the property's been on the market, here's the total potential buyers in the Pinergy system for this property right now, here's um, you know coming soon data we have in the property, here's every price change we've done, here's every status change we've done, here's every open house we've done, this will show past open houses. It's the only spot in the system that will show past open houses. Um, this will tell you how many times the listing's been viewed by other agents in the Pinergy system. How many times other agents' clients have looked at the listing. If you've posted your listing to a uh, social media site from listing section, so Twitter, LinkedIn, um, Facebook, we'll keep track of how many times your post is um, clicked on. So we have that broken down here. And then how many times it's shared. And then it wraps up with the photos and the virtual tours. So, yeah, so that's like, you can print this out. In the same area, there's a price change reflection tool. This is where if you're, if a price change is being considered, 
you could say, look, we're, we're listed at 3,700,000. Now, if we were to go in and lower the price, let's say 3,5, how many new potential buyers would then be matched to the property? So now we're not changing the price of the listing. We're just doing like a what if tool. So what if we did that? How many new contacts would then match the property? And it will do that same counting up thing and then we'll put a red entry in uh, stating how many. I'm not going to make you wait, but one more thing, <laughs> just one more. Uh, this is pretty cool under market reports. So if you go to tools and you go to, actually, let me just go into a regular server here. Yeah. So if you go to tools and you go to market reports, we have a cool market report in here. So I went tools, market reports, new report. And there's a report in here called Area Market Survey. This gives you a complete picture of the market. So if you're curious in like, what does Drake it look like for the market? You can just uh, say Area Market Survey, show me single families, grab the last uh, six months of data for Drake it. So let's take a look. Area Market Survey. So I hit search now. And this report has different sections and it just uh, maps out the whole market. So it's showing you right now First section, what's on the market right now? What's the average days on market by price range? So technically, most properties are on the market right here, right? Uh, currently, uh, what is that? 300 to 349.9. Six properties sitting on the market right now. Average days on market for those is 49. So this is just what's sitting on the market. If you scroll down a little bit, these are all the price changes that occurred in each price range. This is everything that's currently under agreement or contingent at the moment and broken down by price range. So most properties are technically under agreement or contingent right here. There's 11 between 500 and 599. The average days on market, look at this, average days to offer is five. Wow. That's impressive. I can click on the 11 and see the 11 properties involved, but that is extremely low, I think, in any scenario. Um, so that's interesting. And then below this, this is the most important part. This is what's sold. Right, so we look and say, well, technically, this is kind of where your sales are happening, right? Three to 400. 40, 40 single families sold in the last six months in that price range. I'm gonna go right to the average days until an offer came in, it's 29, so about a month. And then this number here, what did they get of their original asking price when they first put it in the system? And in that price range, they're getting 98%. Wow. This one 99, this one 99, and then it drops to 90 here. This one's 99. <laughs> This is interesting, seven to 7.99, two sold, and they got 105% of their asking price, the original asking price. Wow. But it's only two listings, so I'll click on the two. It brings up the two <laughs> listings, and then I'm gonna look at, see that's list price. I want the original price and the sale price, so I can add those columns in. So I'm gonna get rid of the list price, click, remove, add column, and I'm gonna add in, um, was it original? Hopefully we have original, I think we do. Original price, right? And then I wanna see next to that, sale price, so we can do that. Apply and close, so let's see these. Which one was way, wow. Well, that's good there, this is incredible. 654, they got seven, although it took a little bit though, look at that, who knew? 148 days. Yeah, like why, what happens? Now I'm gonna click, see what I mean? You're just gonna keep, like, it's like a yeah. rabbit hole of just like clicking and like, all right, 148, what happened? So uh, it was listed. They asked for more money after listing it. And then they got an offer, went under agreement and sold. So they must have came on low, is my guess on that one maybe? Because I mean, they got what they wanted, then some, I mean, pretty quickly. Well, actually, no. That's new construction, that could possibly be a Oh, um, oh, yeah. is yeah. it? Okay, that yeah. explains say, it, yeah. good catch. Yep, yep, yeah. lot 82, yeah. I didn't see so, that. Oh, well, upgrades. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. There we go. <coughs> Mystery has been solved. <laughs> so, uh, last thing, I guess, I keep saying last thing, the hot sheet report, if you guys, get, everybody know how to set up a hot sheet report? Should I, let me go over that real quick, take some moments. Mm -hmm. All right, so homepage of Energy. Uh, if you're a new agent and you haven't set up a hot sheet, absolutely do it. Uh, the point of the hot sheet is this. The idea is that you know the market after a while, right? You know what's sitting on the market, and what you want to know day to day or throughout the day <coughs> is what is moving on the market. I only want to see movement. 
So that's what the hot sheet does. It filters out and only shows you movement in the market, movement specifically status wise. So I'm gonna to say to the system, create a new hot sheet. And you fill this in and you give it a save name here. So report type says uh, hot sheet, so that's great. Every status is selected. So when I run the report, when I click on the report name, it's gonna run uh, and bring up any status change that occurred. Although I could pick and choose, but I'm gonna say all status changes that occur, track those. Track them for single condo, multi, or land property types. Where the status change occurred, so here's this time frame, where that occurred yesterday or today. And then you just pick the count. So we can do like, right, there. there, and that's it. So again, uh, just to recap, I said to the system, let me know when I run the report of any status change that occurs for a single condo, multi, or land, where the status change occurred either yesterday or up until the moment I run the report, if you will, in Drake It. So I just go up here and give it a name so I don't have to do this every time. Drake It, hot sheet, right? Save. And then it's all set up. So now, tomorrow, when I log into the system, or whenever I want to, uh, I'm going to see what's happening in my market. So I'm going to click on the Drake It hot sheet. And here's what's happening in Drake It in the last two days. So we take a look. Here's the single family breakdown. For single family listings, two new single families came on the market either yesterday or today. And I'm guessing yesterday because the DOM's one for both of those. So those came on the market yesterday. Uh, one, two, three, four have accepted offers. For condos, one new condo came on the market. Uh, and one had an accepted offer, went off the market, and two sold. Multifam, what's that? I'm just gonna say just new listings um, that, that come up. Yeah. Just new listings. Well, no, no, no. Any, any status change. Oh, right, right, there you go, yeah, that's, yeah, that, that, that's what I mean. The yeah, new, a new change, yeah. yeah. Right. So if it just went to like price change or just went to under agreement, that would trigger it to be in the hot sheet. Okay. So a property that's been sitting there for like 300 days and nothing's happened, it's not gonna be on the report. It's gotta have some sort of change. But uh, yeah, so nothing happened to multi really. I mean, really not much. Multifamily really nothing happened, land nothing happened. Condo, you had one new condo come on the market. Uh, one went off the market with an offer, uh, two, two marks sold. And then up here, you have two new single families that came on the market. And when you see new, look at days on market. Because sometimes you'll see new and it'll say like 100 days on market, which means it's a relist probably. So, um, yeah, that's the hot sheet. Click on whatever you want. Would you want to do that today or how long ago? I usually do yesterday to today because if somebody did a price change last night, I want to know about it when I run it in the morning. So I do a little overlap. Okay. And, and this will update every day? Every time you click on it. It'll really? be all of the previous day up until the moment you clicked on it. That'll show everything, what's on the market, what's sold, all that good stuff? Yeah, as long as it just happened. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and you'll probably run that throughout the day, too, and just see what's going on. Okay. Can you do three different towns? You could. In your heart? Would they be three separate? It's up to you. So you can do it together or you can do it separate? Yeah, if there's okay. not much activity, you can throw them into one. Okay. But if it's a big city, you're probably going to want it to be separate from the others. I have a couple in mind. Just yeah. 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 Y